Hello, I'm Tom Morello. Welcome to the latest edition of The Night Watchman Speaks, where you ask questions and I answer them. Question number one today is as follows. You did a cover of Dylan's Blind Willie McTell for the Amnesty International Benefit CD. Have you worked with Amnesty before? Uh, yeah, I have actually worked with Amnesty International uh, for a number of years. And when I found that they got the rights to the entire Bob Dylan catalog and were doing a benefit CD with a lot of great artists on it, I was very happy to lend my services. Uh, I, my first request was that I get to choose the song Blind Willie McTell, which is my favorite Bob Dylan song. Um, and did a pretty radically reworked version of it, uh, but I'm very pleased to be part of that. And it's a the record actually is done very. It's like a four disc set, so you get all the Bob Dylan covers you probably ever want. Um, but uh, you should definitely check it out. My version of Blind Willie McTell. You, Blind, Willie, Blind Willie McTell is not exactly one of the, uh, uh, you know, the Bob Dylan singles. It was uh, on the Bootleg Series Volume One, I think. Um, when they started officially re releasing Dylan bootlegs. And uh, Blind Willie McTell is a fantastic record. It's incredible that he chose to leave it off his uh, uh, regular record. Uh, but his version is a uh, haunting acoustic guitar and piano sort of tale of, of desperation and sort of walks you through the history of uh, racism in America. Uh, my version was recorded entirely in a hotel room in Chicago uh, and I play a left-handed guitar solo on that. And I wanted to do something that was between somewhere between Massive Attack and Leonard Cohen. So there you have it. Blind Willie McTell. Question number two. This year is the 100th anniversary of Woody Guthrie's birth. Are you involved in any celebrations? Yes, I am. I just returned from Germany where I played uh, a Woody Guthrie Festival and Conference in Berlin. And I'll be performing at the uh, Grammy Museum here in Los Angeles for another Woody celebration. And at every one of my shows, we always uh, play some Woody Guthrie to celebrate. We play it twice as hard here in his hundredth, um, on his, the hundredth anniversary of his birth. Uh, uh, last year, uh, an album called A Note of Hope, which was during the latter years of Woody Guthrie's life, he was unable to play guitar, but he still wrote hundreds and hundreds of pages of lyrics. And the Woody Guthrie um, Foundation has occasionally allows other artists to dip into these lyrics and create original music. Um, like on the Billy Bragg and Wilco uh, Mermaid Avenue, the great Mermaid Avenue records. Uh, so A Note of Hope is a record similar to that where a number of artists, including myself, uh, got a hold of some Woody Guthrie lyrics, redid the music, or c created music around those lyrics, and I did a song called Ease My Revolutionary Mind, which is a... Uh, it's a it's a it's a lyric that is you know for me they're not a lot of whole, they're not a whole lot of love songs in the Night Watchman catalog but this one is a uh, satirical political love song about how the only way to ease the protagonist's revolutionary mind is with a revolutionary woman there you have it number three I saw you on Jimmy Fallon with Springsteen it rocked Wrecking Ball has similarities to the Night Watchman's Worldwide Rebel songs what was it like playing on Bruce's album uh, well. It is always an honor to do anything with uh, Bruce Springsteen, who's one of my favorite artists and a real stand-up guy. Um, but I, I was particularly excited when I received the text to come and play some guitar work on the Springsteen album that would become Wrecking Ball. I did uh, one day of work here in Los Angeles, one day of work in, um, in New Jersey, and played some guitar solos, some rhythm guitar parts on a number of songs, and uh, some, you know, some of which made the record. And it's just a real honor to play on the song The Jack of All Trades and This Depression. I play the solos on those and a little bit of rhythm guitar on the, on the first single too. So uh, always a, always an honor to rock with Bruce. And, and of course, our, our musical acquaintance goes back to when Rage Against the Machine covered his song, The Ghost of Tom Joad, back in 1997. And then years later, in 2008 or so, I played an electric version of Ghost of Tom Joad with Bruce Springsteen that is... Uh, really one of the highlights of my musical career. So, the boss, as they say, some of my anarchist friends say, uh, Bruce Springsteen is the only boss worth listening to. Next up. I saw you perform with Ben Harper at Occupy LA on Sunday. You two should work together more often. Well, Ben Harper and I work together quite often. <laughs> we've, uh, we've toured together, we've played shows together, um, and most recently we did a duet on the Worldwide Rebel Songs record called Save the Hammer for the Man, which is one of the songs you saw us play at Occupy LA. 
And that day we were actually shooting a video for the song Save the Hammer for the Man, both at Occupy and um, a staged video shoot as well. So there will be videographic evidence of Ben Harper and I and our musical camaraderie. I heard you guys were pissed that... Ru this is question number five. I heard you guys were pissed that Rush Limbaugh played your song. What's up with that? Rush rules. Well, I guess the question is, what's up with... The question you've asked is, what's up with that? First of all, I agree that Rush rules. If you're talking about the band Rush, Getty Lee, Alex Lifeson, Neil Peart, uh, that band Rush also recently asked Rush Limbaugh to stop using their music on uh, his show. Um, just to clarify, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Rush Limbaugh is a right-wing, neo-fascist, racist, misogynist uh, radio host here in the United States. I was somewhat surprised that he's even still on the air, but apparently he is. And he um, was playing, uh, as a bumper for his show, played the Rage Against the Machine song, Sleep Now, In the Fire. We were alert, alerted to this fact by fans. I was not tuned into the show that day. And uh, uh, immediately, you know, here's, here's the thing you, you may not understand. He... Any radio show has fair use of music. They just have to pay a small stipend to ASCAP and BMI, these companies which you know collect money for music. But um, Rush did so without our permission. Now, does a radio station need our permission? No, unless it's used on like a podcast or some sort of syndicated event where they're making money from a thing that they're selling, in which case we're going to sue his ass all the way to Tuesday. Uh, I believe he just played it, or his handlers just played it on his show, though. And we sent a sternly worded message and tweets to kindly request that he stop playing the show, uh, stop playing our music uh, on his show. Now, of course, there's this is, uh, you know, it's not a, so much a First Amendment issue. You could say any racist and misogynist things he wants on his show. The First Amendment protects that. And we can complain about it loudly, like we did, and uh, we'll continue to do so if he... Uh, Actually, what we decided to do with the the amount of money that the Rage will receive from using from Rush Limbaugh using our song on his show is we're going to donate that money plus some more money uh, to a uh, rape and incest support group to because we don't want his dirty money and we'd uh, we're going to put it to some good. Who's the slut now, Rush Limbaugh? All right, that's it for um, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I'm the Night Watchman. This was the Night Watchman speaks. You can check. Uh, you can send uh, submit more questions to nightwatchmanmusic.com. I'll be happy to answer them next time. Thank you very much. Adios, people.